Hello guys and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to our series What's Inside? A series where we take a look at what's inside regular eSkate stuff. Could be a board, could be a component, could be anything and today, as you probably guessed from the title, I've got something super cool for you. So in my hands here, I've got a parcel from La Croix Boards and as you've probably guessed from the title of this video, it is a Stormcore 60D. Now I have already opened this parcel guys, I couldn't wait. Uh, to open it and I was waiting to film this video so I just decided to open it and have a quick peek inside myself and uh, yeah I'm really looking forward to opening this for you guys and also talking a little bit about what's inside we're going to open this thing up completely and have a look at the electronics and see what's actually going on inside this shell so without further ado let's get right into it and let's open this box right okay then guys let's open the box and see what we get inside Right, the first thing uh, we get is the on-off switch. Now this is an RGB switch and can display different colors. And I believe the Stormcore is programmed to give you battery information on the LED on this switch. So I think it goes from uh, red to blue to green, I think, uh, to indicate battery status. I think it's 25, 50 and 70, up and down to 75. So that's pretty cool. Definitely a... Um, Definitely an upgrade from its predecessor, the Foxbox Unity. We get a servo uh, to JST three pin adapter. That's if you want to run a PWM or PPM remote into this. And we also get a USB-C cable for programming. So let's get all that out of the way. The thing we are interested in the most is this, the Foxbox. The box. The thing we are interested in the most is this, the Stormcore 60D. And look at it, it is a fairly chunky piece of equipment, actually. It's fairly heavy. I mean, when I uh, think about how heavy the Fox Box Unity is, in fact, actually, I've got a Unity. Let me go and get it. Yeah, when I compare this to the Unity, it is significantly heavier. And also, it looks a little bit bigger. We'll measure that. Let's weigh the Unity. 252 grams and the storm core 347 so it's 100 grams heavier one interesting thing to note is it appears to be yeah the same mountain pattern for attaching to heat sinks or whatever but this is significantly heavier it's got a lot more metal in it it's got bigger heat sink clearly the unity does struggle with cooling and you do often need to strap it to a, an external heat sink to to get rid of some of that uh, heat especially if you're a bigger guy uh, like me this thing can struggle at higher motor amps this thing feels like it's got a substantial heat sink a lot uh, a lot chunkier than the uh, than its predecessor and i hope i hope um Lacroix don't mind me calling the Unity, the, Fo the Foxbox Unity, the Lacroix Stormcore predecessor. It was designed uh, by the same guys, um, Jeffrey Friesen and Charles Alix. And they basically used to work for Inertion who, uh, who bought the Foxbox out. And then they left Inertion when it all went a bit south and they joined Lacroix. Now I believe Jeffrey uh, was working on the design for a new motor controller a uh, completely different design from the Unity and uh, Lacroix did actually pinch him and he now works for Lacroix. Tramp had a go but he wasn't interested and uh, I think he's got a good home at Lacroix and I think um, they'll do some cool stuff together. Now one thing I want to do is I just want to quickly do a size comparison. So this thing is 115.7, 116 millimeters wide. And the storm core looks like the storm core is roughly 10 millimeters wider. The unity is what's that? 66.5 deep. And the storm core 69.2. But I think the difference is in how chunky they are. The storm core is significantly chunkier. So the Unity is coming in at about 20 millimeters at its thickest, and the Storm Core, and the Storm Core is coming in at 23.6. So actually, it's not as bad as it first appears. You think this is a chunky guy, but the Unity is quite bulky in the middle. Um, 
and the storm core is just bulky all over really it sort of tapers from a thin um, thinner plastic edge all the way up to a metal edge now putting the unity to one side for a minute i think the um the design of this of the storm core is really really interesting so you've got all your ports on the front here uh, all your normal ports apart from the sensor ports there is a port here but i don't actually know what that does and then it looks like we've got a five pin UART port, UART port on the side there. That's interesting. Also the USB-C connector here as well. So there's nothing sort of sticking up, which is quite nice. And uh, the best, one of the best features about this thing is the is the hidden sort of integrated XT90. I think that's a really nice idea because the XT90 connector is quite bulky. And to have that recessed into the unit itself saves a lot of space inside an enclosure. So this is designed to be quite compact, actually. And if we flick it round to the top, we see our two sensor ports, you know, at the right side for where the motors are going to go. And yeah, it's really nice. A couple of mounting tabs on the side to screw it down if you needed to screw it to something. That's really cool. And yeah, this is sort of plastic at the front and metal at the back. And I think the reason they've done this is to have heat sink at the top here. This is going to be where the main power switching stages, the MOSFETs are, um, some of the chips, some of the things that run hotter are going to be at the top here. And then at the bottom is going to be things like the Bluetooth module. Uh, it's going to be somewhere here, probably not there because that's a USB port, probably here. Uh, and other stuff that's not um, critical, but maybe, you know, the Bluetooth port needs to be here for uh, RF transparency. So looking at this, we see there are four screws here and also two there so i guess those two will free the plastic and then those four will split this metal in half there's only one way to find out and that is to open this bad boy now i'm going to use my trusty iFixit kit to open this i really like this kit for doing electronic stuff it's got all of the all of the bits and pieces to open stuff in here and also a full comprehensive toolkit of which i've lost some of the bits for as well right so i'm just going to crack these two bolts first and then i'm kind of expecting this plastic to come away but it doesn't feel like it wants to are those clip okay that doesn't feel like it wants to go yet which is interesting so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to different size different size guys what's that about i'm going to get these um these underside ones out split the um the case in half so these just come out so easy right now there's no bolts holding this together oh ah <laughs> yeah so there are two little two little clips in here they don't come off very easy though that wasn't easy to do when it was attached but opening uh this up we can see immediately this top piece is in fact a heat sink and there you go it's got some thermal pad here uh, which is in contact with all the mosfets i'll show you that in a second um, and brings it to the front here so this is a heat sink at the top and now we can see the device itself super nice really really nice blue pcb big fan of blue pcbs and white ones oh cool look at this guys hopefully this comes up on the camera stormcore 60d Designed for Lacroix by Jeffrey Friesen and Charles Alex, version 1.2. Really nice. I don't think the Unity had something like that on there. It didn't have the engineer's name. I don't think. Don't quote me on that. Really, really nice. And I'll take you through some of this. One thing I do notice here that this is... Ah, cool. There's the, there's the, um, the capacitors, the electrolytic capacitors, uh, which are on the input. They're basically across this, um, this power, really. And that, uh, I think it's to like some noise filtering, I think. I think that's what they do. I'm not massively, um, I wouldn't say I'm an expert on VESCs, uh, but I am an electronics engineer, so I do know a little bit about electronics. One thing I notice here is there is a bolt here. I guess that's holding the PCB to the bottom. I'll get a little, uh, little opening device from the kit. Ah, there we go, yeah. So it's just being held on with the pad. Now guys, this is a significant heatsink. This is chunky. I mean, on its own, let's weigh this. So 200 grams of this, this VESC is heatsink, top and bottom. 
with the bottom piece being 150 grams. So that's 50, that's 150 grams. So it's 200 grams of metal, which basically clamp around the, um, the power stage of the, um, the Besk. And yeah, keep everything nice and cool. I always think it's cool. I hope you can see that in the camera. You can see the imprint of the PCB on the, uh, on there. That's super, super cool. So yeah, 200 grams of heat sinking. Right, let's get the anti-static bubble wrap back. So yeah, guys, here we go. The LaCroix Storm Core. Now, like I said, I don't know a lot about these um, VESCs, but you know, I know enough to tell you some stuff. This is the uh, Bluetooth module. So this is how you talk to the board with your uh, phone or your device. There's the antenna for that device. That's the Bluetooth chip. That's the uh, MCU, which is uh, commonly referred to as the STM, I think. And that's basically the brains of the operation. That's what's telling the VESC what to do. That's controlling it. That's running the program on this VESC and controlling what's going on. And now we have to remember that this is a dual controller, guys. So roughly, you know, there are two VESCs here. There's one this side and that side. And uh, we can see that these are based on the VESC 6 hardware. And how do we know that? Well, there's three uh, shunt resistors in here. So these are current sensing resistors. And uh, yeah, these basically allow the, um, the drivers, which are these, I guess, these are the DRVs. I think these are the DRVs. These are the drivers. So these are the, the motor controllers, essentially. And it allows, uh, I think it's the motor controller or maybe it's the MCU. Somebody who knows more about VESCs will pipe up in the comments, I'm sure. So read in the comments, but essentially allows the, the VESC to know um, its positioning of the motors. Now, three are better than two, uh, more accurate, which means that it runs FOC a lot better now, I had a chat with Jason Potter recently. One of the things he said to me is that it's not, it's not proven that VESC 4, VESC 6 is better than VESC 4. And I guess in a way he's right. They both work for electric skateboards, um, but VESC 6 is more precise and does run, run FOC a lot better. So the basic operation of this is, this is the brains, the DRV, it tells the DRV uh, what to do. The DRV drives these MOSFETs and that switches the high current, uh, traces to the motors to control them. Now, it looks like there are four MOSFETs per phase here, four MOSFETs to switch, which is gonna be reliable. I think the Unity only had two or three from memory. I don't wanna open that Unity, but there are four MOSFETs per phase here, which is really nice as well. And if we open the back here, you can see those large current traces. Interesting. Now, one of the things I always like to look at on my electronics are these um, phase wires, how well they're soldered. And these appear to be soldered really well. Normally that's a sign of, a, of being cheaped out. That one is a bit, I wouldn't say it was amazing. It's good enough. Uh, I, won't be, I won't be reflowing any of those. They'll all look okay to me. That one could do with a little bit maybe, but I don't think I will. Ah, okay. So that five pin port on the side is the SWD port actually. So that's like a programming port and that is a UART port. That four pin one is a UART. We've got ground uh, plus five volts and we've got a TX3 and RX3. And you can see that PCB mounted XT90 here. Power goes in there, 60 volt max, because this is a 60 volt controller. So this is safe for one to 12 S uh, voltages. And yeah, that comes in and then here we go, that's your power and it gets distributed. Some other stuff in here would be, if I can find the CAN port again, that little chip there will be the CAN chip right next to the CAN port. And also there should be some filter chips somewhere for the sensors. I'm not sure where they are. Maybe these here are the filter chips for the sensors just to give a little bit of filtering before that information gets passed on to the, the gate drivers. Don't know what that is. But yeah, I mean, all in all, guys, I mean, this is what you're paying for. This is what your $350 is mostly for. It's the electronics. It's the design that's gone into this. Um, and yeah, I mean, it does look really, really nice. And I'm looking forward to putting this on my board. This is going on my mountain board to replace the Tramper Vesks. 
and I'm looking forward to running this, to be honest, guys. So yeah. And there we go, guys. That's what's inside of the LaCroix Stormcore 60D. Now, I've put myself out there a little bit with this video because as I've said to you in the video uh, itself, my knowledge on VESCs is not amazing. You know, I am an electronics engineer, contrary to what uh, Evolve Skateboards say. Um, but I don't know everything about everything, guys. So, you know, my specialization is in RF equipment, uh, radio frequency stuff. So I do a lot of wireless bits and pieces. Um, this is kind of a little bit unusual to me, understand the principles of it. So I may have got a few bits wrong there. I hope I didn't. Uh, the basic operation of it, I think I pretty much know that. Some of the chips I may have got wrong, I don't know. But there will be somebody, I guarantee you guys, who knows more than me, who tells me that I'm wrong in the comments and that's fine guys, listen to that guy. Um, I'm here to do the presenting bit and just sort of show you what's inside stuff. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode of What's Inside. This is episode three. Uh, I know there's episode two is missing and never really talked to you about that, but that is was the Evolve GTR teardown that uh, I had to remove. So I hope the choir don't come after me and tell me to remove this one, but uh, I certainly intend to carry on making these What's Inside videos for you guys. And I know you enjoy them and I enjoy doing them. So guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.